Hi everybody, uh, this is Nikki and I'm here to do another video that is my personal experience not to be used as medical advice. Um, I'm trying to get a video in about, with, I'm sorry, with some auto mode basics as I understand them. Um, I've just made three attempts at this thing and it turns out that the basics are very complicated. So I'm just going to do my best and if it helps, it helps and if not, uh, then not. Okay, so anyway. Um, basically I was trying to figure out what kinds of thing information I could give to people who were either just coming into auto mode or have even been in for a couple of weeks or even a couple of months um, and either never went to training or got very short training um, because there's definitely a lot to this uh, mode um, and I guess the first thing that I thought maybe would be helpful first of all I'd like to say that these are gathered pieces of information um, this is, a lot of it has to do with the algorithm, which I don't know if it's a protected piece of information, but it really is difficult to get information on it. Um, so we're kind of doing patchwork and, you know, people are saying, well, I understand this to be true. And someone else is saying, I understand that to be true. Um, lots of conversation, lots of collaboration. And in my case, lots of observation. I've been, you know, observing some of these things for four or five months, six months. Um, so some decent information. It's a lot of Asians, um, but... But it still is not Medtronic's manual on what automotive is. Okay, so with that being said, um, the first thing I think that you'll notice in automotive is a blue shield. Um, for those of you guys that are brand new, you do want to look for a blue shield. Once you've gone past the blue shield, um, the next thing that you are going to find is that in auto mode, hence the name auto, um, you are not in much control over your insulin any longer. Um, auto mode is really kind of taking over control. The things that you are able to continue to um, operate as far as insulin goes is a food bolus and a correction bolus. Um, with the exception of a food bolus where it really is, is up to you what to enter there, um, that's basically all you get as far as you know inputting what you need insulin for. Um, well, I guess a correction bolus is kind of the same category. Uh, the food bolus, it's still up to you to put in a correct carb amount. Um, and the correction bolus, it's still up to you to put in the correct BG. Auto mode, um, I don't believe auto mode is going to give you a correction if you are below a 150. I think you have to be above a 150. And I will say kind of an opinionated statement is that even when it does, um, lots of people report, and it was in my, my case too, that it just gives a really, really light correction. Um, Sometimes it's a fraction of what you would get in manual mode. It's obviously intentional. It can just be very frustrating. Um, and I think that the reason why is it's trying to bring you, it's a high excursion. And I think it's trying to bring it back in slowly, but it can be frustrating, um, which puts people sometimes wondering, how can I get that insulin, which is the, another later in the video. Um, okay, so you, so you can no longer override things in, manual, in auto mode. Um, there is also no longer a basal rate. Your manual mode basal rate no longer applies. Okay, this is the part I'm not sure of, but I think that although auto mode does take into account your last six days worth of your insulin history, your, your total daily dose, um, it will not be confined to a predetermined hourly rate. It is deciding based on lots of complicated stuff. Um, I mean, it could be one thing, but we just, we just don't know. I think it's lots of com complicated stuff. Um, going on both under your skin, that's technical, and uh, inside your transmitter and pump. Um, it's deciding the amount of insulin you're going to need every five minutes. So every five minutes is going to give you a microbolus or it's not going to give you a microbolus. Um, some of the things that I believe is taking into consideration is, as I said, your last six days worth of your insulin history, um, that blood sugar goal of a 120, that target of a 120, um, your insulin on board, your, if you're doing a food bolus at the time, some people report that as you get a food bolus, there's no micro bolus for some time afterwards. Um, so it's, and I believe um, what's happening in your interstitial fluid. Um, that is the calibration factor. I also think that helps to determine the micro bolus size. Um, those things are speculation. Um, however, whatever it's doing, it is deciding whether or not you need a micro bolus. And once it's decided that you need one, it is determining what the size of that micro bolus is. Um, microboluses can vary greatly in size from user to user, the smallest being 0 0.025 for us all, I believe. In fact, I think that what, what defines uh, minimum delivery is 0 0.025 per 
per hour, and that's what sets it apart from suspend, which is just zero. Um, don't quote me on that because I, I don't know. It's like that, but I think that's it. But anyway, um, anyway, so even though microboluses can vary greatly in size from user to user, um, within one user, it's, there's often kind of a common range. So for instance, my range, which was a little bit disappointing, um, was a 0 0.05 to a 0 0.1. That was seemed to be my microbolus size range. I did get lots of 0 0.025s, and I did get a decent amount of 0 0.125, but 0 0.05 to 0 0.1 seemed to be my range. Um, an occasional 0 0.175 and 1.3. I was so excited when I saw it, I thought maybe things were going to, you know, <laughs> explode or whatever into a joy of microbolus increases but it didn't happen anyway um so that's my range but then there's a lot of very there's a lot of uh varying sizes between users so that's so i have this little range whereas the next person might uh, report that they have a 0 0.2 to 0 0.35 range with an occasional 0 0.5 she said 0 0.35 to an occasional 0 0.5 microbolus um for me, that's the mystery, is how do I get with them? Because I would like to have bigger microboluses. I think they'd be more effective. And if I had more effective microboluses, then maybe Automo could help me fight some of those highs. Um, but at a 0 0.05 every five minutes, you know, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a tough battle for me. Um, one theory is that a high carb diet does buy you bigger microboluses. Um, I haven't tried it yet. That kind of fits for what I did because I was on a low carb diet because I was afraid to eat any carbs in auto mode. Um, and I did get tiny microboluses. Whereas one woman said she was she was on a very high carb diet and she got 0 0.975. I don't know how often that was. I don't know if she saw it one time or if she was wearing glasses, you know, whatever. But I almost fell over because I was like, wow, that was, that's like, you know, striking, the, you know, winning the lottery. Anyway, um, okay. So those two would fit, but two people, two cases just don't make a theory true. Um, if any of you guys out there have anything to say about the, your carb, how many carbs you have in your diet and your microbolus size or your range, I would love to hear it. Um, it would be very interesting to hear what people think about their own. Um, okay, <clears throat> anyway, back to auto mode and these microboluses. So if you don't get a micro, then what? That means that you did not get that insulin. Um, every time you miss a microbolus, what it's adding up to is a minimum delivery. Minimum delivery, some people think it has to be two and a half hours. That's not true. It just, it will, it maxes out at two and a half hours. I believe it can just be 10 minutes. I think it's once you've missed a microbolus, you know, you've missed 10 minutes of insulin. It's a small pocket of minimum delivery. Um, up until two hours and 25 minutes, it doesn't have to alert you. In fact, auto mode does nothing to communicate with you that you're not getting insulin. It doesn't beep. It doesn't do anything. Um, the only time it will alert you is once you've reached that two and a half hours. And at that time, it will ask you for a BG required. Um, and it's basically just saying, hey, I want to make sure everything's still okay. Um, and you have 90 minutes to give it a BG. You have 90 minutes to give it the BG, at which point it will return if it likes it. Um, and if it doesn't, remember the 35%. Um, if it doesn't like it, then it can you know, keep asking for it or whatever it is. You can ask others about that. I will, I will let others share what happens when it doesn't like or you don't give. Um, okay. Anyway, so that is what happens. Um, this was going really well there for a minute. Okay. Um, basically, that whole period can be without insulin. Um, the only way for you to know whether or not you've gotten insulin over that period is to use a graph screen. I did do another video on using a graph screen. There's really informa really important information in your graph screen, and you can look for these periods of no micro, uh, sorry, no uh, pink dots, which are the, uh, the microboluses, and that will kind of give you an idea that you have not gotten um, insulin for those periods. However, the appearance of pink dots does not mean that you received a lot of insulin because remember, each microbolus can be a different size. So you could have gotten 10.025 dots in a row, which would add up to, you know, 15% of your, your basal rate. Um, in fact, I did a video the other, I did a, um, an experiment the other day, which I will do the video and then I'm gonna cut out of here. But um, the experiment was four hours in, in auto mode and which was four hours of pretty solid, with the exception of the first 30 minutes, pretty solid micro bolus, um, you know, delivery. 
And so it appeared as if all looked good and my blood sugar did rise. And I, and, and so when I went back and added it up, it turned out in the first hour, I received 14% of what I would receive in my, in my uh, manual mode basal rate. The second hour was 94%, the third hour was 64.64%, and the fourth hour was 98%. Basically, it came to about 65.5% over four hours, so of course I had a blood sugar rise. Um, the only way I would know that is by going, using my grass screen, scrolling back and looking at the sizes and adding them up. I have to go to part, part two, so <laughs> hang in there.